Oh shit, Raza's here in here. Let's go. That's one. That's one to see. Let's go. All right, we're doing research. Wait, I'm pretty excited for this. Wait, I can't even tell if it's doing anything. Yes, it's dead. Oh, that's so broken. That's so broken. Holy fuck. Wait, I can't even tell. Wait, no, wait. What do you mean it's so broken? It, it, Varus is like no AP damage. Varus. It's Raza Cafe. Uh, I mean, Raza's a professional capper. Fuck it, never trust anything Raza says. This is uh, patch 11.2. Um, I think the goal of this patch, they said, was to essentially unnerve some of the reroll comps. And then add more power into, um, I think in this case, add more flexibility around how you can play this game. Uh, I've only played a few games so far. I think I played like five or six games. So my impressions are still kind of early. So my patch rundown isn't going to be perfect or anything like that. So is 80 just got it? I think 80 is fine. I think 80 comps are perfectly fine. But... I think overall, it's it's a little harder to uh, gauge the strength of your lobbies now. But uh, let me let me try. Okay, so for the loot orbs, I think Reforger is pretty good. I don't think there's anything wrong with them. Uh, Magnetic Remover is also really good. Uh, uh, these are just adding more scale expression to the game, like using when to use Reforger and when to use Magnetic Remover. And since they're not um, not they're not replacing gold or anything like that, this is a really good addition to the game. Uh, no complaints here. It's just adding more scale. Um, and then for the armory, I like this change a lot. The two regular components to one shadow, one regular. I think that, uh, that should have been in the game from the beginning. I wish they changed it to the four component armory, but the one on one seems okay as well. And then the four two, uh, armory, uh, they removed it, but they added, uh, the new special armories. So my feeling on the special armories is that I don't, I don't like the fact that the consumables, Below, all belong in the same tier. For example, Reforger is not a real option. Magnetic Remover is not a real option. And Nico and Loaded Dice, Loaded Dice is actually super rare. It's so much better. Like if I had to say which one's the best, um, cause like uh, Magnetic Remover you never pick. Never pick. And then the, um, the Reforger you never pick. And then uh, the Nico and the the Nico and the Loaded Dice, I think Nico is slightly better than Loaded Dice if you have one copy of the unit. But let's just say you're playing something like a Kel Comp. Loaded Dice is slightly better than Nico if you're looking for one copy of a 5 cost unit. So a lot of the times that unit you're looking for is either Kale or Teemo. And then also on Meta TFT, they have this really helpful Loaded Dice website that you can use. So let's just say you want to find Teemo and you want to know who to use it on. In this case, the best units to find Teemo is to put it on Ziggs or Cled. Um, so I, I did this research a uh, while back for set 4.5. It's, uh, it's really good to know that it's still relevant today. And then for Kale, it's uh, any of these guys. So anyways, um, so I really don't like, but I really don't like how some people can get Nico and other people can get Reforger and Magnetic Remover. That's, that's ridiculous. That's actually absurdly stupid. That's probably the most tilting thing of this fucking patch. <coughs> and then the item components, the item components are whatever, they're fine. Combined items are fine. It's not too big of a deal. Uh, I have no problems. And the emblems, the emblems offer you such a spike on your team. Now all those trace traits that like uh, people say that were like insane um, are now super doable with emblems. Uh, to me, I thought this was going to be a good change. It ends up being a really bad change because of how, how it's implemented. At stage 4, you get a, ra a random emblem, which is okay. But starting from stage 5 and 6 and 7, you get emblems that match um, your current team comp. So like I said, if you're playing 6 uh, you're playing six redeemed with no other synergies, you're most likely get a redeem spat. Uh, it, it seems really easy to guarantee emblems with specific team comps. And with other team comps, it's almost impossible to get an emblem that you want. So I really don't like it. What do you think about a two regular one shadow component? Yeah, I like that. The problem with this armory since consumables is that they contain items. And you should pick items instead so you have more power. I disagree. Um, if you think about it, Nico's help to guarantee you hit a two star four cost is like giving your unit like three 
no, like five BF swords worth of power, fucking like four uh four giant spells worth of power. It's like give me a you know a warmog plus a death blade at the same time, and then it's just so much power. You you rather have the Nico's help most of the times. I would say at stage four, a Nico's probably worth more than a full item most of the times actually, not always but most of the times. It's, that's my complaints about the armory. Um, I don't have, like the way that emblems are implemented. I wish the emblems are just you. You never get an emblem that has anything relevant to your team. Like you should always get four emblems, and none of the re uh, emblems should have any relevance to your team. So it encourages you to pivot. As it stands, it just encourages you to build uh, these like vertical comps that I never get any other emblems offered. Uh, so it's really stupid. And it's really annoying to me. I really don't like it, but it's fine. Uh, crit, uh, with a crit nerf, um, everything, all the damage goes down in this game, so tank comps go, uh, value goes way up. As a result, knight, uh, knight value goes way, way up. So the value of two knights goes way, way up because of this crit damage change. Uh, if you think about it, it makes sense, right? Because if a previous, uh, unit was doing, I don't know, if the previous unit was doing 50 damage, uh, let's just say, uh, let's just say it was doing 70 damage. After, uh, armor MR, after armor, it was doing 50 after night, it would do 30, right? And with a crit, it, it would used to do 70 times 5. It used to do 105. And let's just say after armor, it does like, uh, I don't know, 80. After night, it would do... God. After night, it would do 60. Um... So previously, um, and now with the, uh, the, so this is the old Chris system. And then the new Chris system would be something like this. Uh, what is, what is 70 times one of, what is 70 times 1.3? 91. And let's just say after armor, it does like, I don't know, uh, like, I don't know, 60, I don't know, 67. After a knight, it'll do 47. So, so basically, the point is that knight value, because it's a flat reduction, gets a huge uh, boost against this uh, this change. So, it's, so knight, knights become really good. And in fact, the defensive itemization as a as an entire branch becomes better because the damage is just lower. Um, as a result, I think I th I think kill comp is a lot stronger. So th that's my guess, but. I don't know. I think I, I just from from the games I played, I'm pretty sure Kale comps a lot stronger. The Kale nerfs though, the Kale nerfs don't matter. Kale nerf doesn't matter at all. Uh, uh, let me just go down real quick. Uh, this this does not matter. Seven to ten does not matter. Um. Okay. Um. Dragon Slayer. Uh, this is pretty irrelevant. Ironclad. This one's huge. Ironclad 4 is so easy to tech in. You just need one spat, which is really easy to get. And okay, the the jump between okay, Ironclad goes Ironclad goes. This is so stupid. Ironclad goes 40 to 90 to 180. But and people always talk about how like oh, from 40 to 90 is diminishing returns. It's not diminishing returns. This jump is so big. Why is it so big? I don't get it. For a single spat item, this is ridiculous. This is so stupid. Like, literally, if you have an iron class spat, it invalidates uh, AD comps at the end of the game. This is so stupid. This is actually so stupid. Uh, uh, God, this this actually annoys me so much. This this jump is ridiculous. It's not. It has no diminishing returns. This is just ridiculous amount of armor. Um. So I, I do not like this, but it's fine. Um. Yeah. Whatever. <clears throat> and then uh, 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 AD comps usually have uh, less counterplay to uh, to armor than AP comps. That's fine. It's a little too easy to play Ironclad for yeah. Uh, some comps just fit it for free. Whatever. Um, uh, Renewer six. Uh, this one's pretty fringe. It's really strong. It doesn't happen that often. Uh, Revenant 4 is actually surprisingly balanced. I thought it was going to be really OP. Um, from what I've seen, it's pretty whatever. There's a lot of times uh, Nocturne, when he revises, revises with 40% health and 75% health, 5% health. It doesn't matter because Nocturne heals to full. Spellweaver 6, pretty sure this is a bait. Uh, Skirmisher 9, pretty sure this is a bait. These are bait 
trees. A hundred percent OP OP. That's true, but either way, I'm pretty sure this is fine. This is a bait. This is a bait. Knights are better because AD comps do less damage overall. Yes, yes. Why is rank down? Uh, I don't know why rank is down. But if rank doesn't come back up, then I unfortunately can't stream today. I can't stream tomorrow, and also probably can't stream this weekend because I have to do some prep. Why is rank down? I don't know. Can you play a normal game with viewers since rank is down? I'll just go over the patch uh, review, I guess. Cavalier damage reduction. This one is actually kind of sad. Um, I mean, Cavaliers probably need a nerf, but um, this one's still kind of sad. Because <clears throat> <'Cause>, uh, <laughs> cause the sad thing about Cavaliers isn't the fact that uh, I mean, they need a nerf or a buff. It's because Cavaliers are only strong because of Hecarim. And since Hecarim is no longer strong, Cavaliers probably didn't need to be nerfed. Um, so like, it wasn't like people were complaining about 4 Cavaliers Sejuani or anything like that. No one was ever complaining about that shit. 4 Cavaliers Sejuani is super killable. It was just Hecarim. So a little bit sad to see this nerfed, but I understand why they want to just get ca uh, Cavaliers out of the meta. Monstrosity, uh, the Monstrosity change is definitely a nerf. At stage, at stage uh, 2, Monstrosity is completely unchanged. If you get... Stage 2, like before Krugs, Monstrosity is just as good. Stage 3 and 4 and 5, um, like past Stage 3, Monstrosity is a lot weaker. It's like essentially only good as a tank, I, I would say. I don't really see too many Monstrosity builds do really well anymore. So, Dawnbringer uh, change, I don't really notice it. But Karma feels really strong, so maybe it's noticeable? I don't know. Hard for me to notice. Um, Redeemed buff is really noticeable. This 10 AP makes a huge difference. I think Velkaz, uh, I think Velkaz, um, Varus, and Kale benefit the most from this. Because a lot of times they can actually play 6 Redeemed. I'm 100% okay. I'm fine with Neek capping Hecarim, just buffs Cavs a little bit later. Yeah, but I don't know. I, I wish they would just balance the game um, by, at this point. Because it's been like, it's been like, how many patches are we in? Like, um, it's been like a month and a half already. Varus comp into Kale, yeah, I feel like I feel like Varus comp into Kale is just as strong. Skirmisher change, this is fine. Doesn't really change the core of the problem of skirmishers though, which is uh, Skirmisher became um, Skirmisher became a reroll comp um out of nowhere, but yeah, most of the times when you see Skirmishers do well, it's uh, either because they hit two star Skirmishers really really early, or they're re rolling Skirmishers. It's it's really rare that you see like um. Uh, people pivot into skirmishers just because they got a two-star Jax. But this is fine. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, it's a reroll comp now, but that's fine. <coughs> Lissandra buff is actually fine for me. Uh, people complain how Lissandra is too strong. I don't see it. I don't see it. I think it's a good item holder now. Previously, she was not doing too much. Vein buff. I see a vein buff. Uh, vein um, comes pop up. So Vein's probably pretty strong again. I think it's okay. Nothing wrong with that. Vladimir buff. I think this one is probably the like most controversial one because um people are creating these fucking insane Vladimir unkillable tank uh tank builds now. And it's not just this Vladimir buff, it's actually this Vladimir buff combined with uh these item buffs right here. Uh, Vladimir actually scales insanely well with Archangel Staff and Archangel Staff of Immortality. I I, I can't tell you why, but for some reason I always see it on Vladimir and it always pops off. I guess it's the fact that Vladimir, because he has Renewer, casts a lot, so he can cheat out mana. And then um, the more HP he has, the more um, healing he gets. Either way, I, I see it do really well. Um, like with the Warmogs and uh, with Warmogs and Archangel Staff, he actually pops off like crazy. Uh, so. Hey, what's on your boat? I'm doing a patch review because uh, the rank is down, Smudge. Saw your announcement today. My wife just now found out we are pregnant. Oh shit. We're gonna be pregnant together. AD comps feel so bad to play when you can fit Shadow Locket or Four Knights. Uh, yeah, AD comps don't. I don't think comps don't feel that bad to play. I don't think it's that bad. I think people are kind of exaggerating how bad AD comps are. I think they're fine, actually. I think they're fine. I, I, I don't know. I see Bebe talk about it too. It's just, I think they're fine. <coughs> Anyways. <coughs> Brand, uh, this doesn't change too much, but uh, there's this really annoying bug. 
I, at least I see what happened. When Brand attacks Assassin right next to him, he takes three autos to cast instead of two. But this doesn't change too much. Might be a tiny nerf, but I, I can't tell. Um, Hecarim got Hecarim got destroyed. Um, his healing got nerfed by a significant amount. His damage got uh, nerfed by a significant amount as well. And so he does he does like very little damage without AP, and his healing is like nerfed by a lot. Um. I don't know. I think he's okay, actually. I, st I still see him do heal a lot in 6 Forgotten. Like, with the Wormonks, he, he still heals a lot. But, I don't know. Hecarim is good with Shadow Spark? Yeah, I believe it. But the, then again, you probably don't want to itemize Hecarim anymore, right? Fuck Hecarim, all my homies hit Hecarim. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's the right way to fix Hecarim. I don't like Hecarim's design. I don't like him in set 4. I don't like him in this set. I assume they had to destroy him because of the bug fix. Nah, Hecarim was really broken before the bug fix. Like, they need to destroy Hecarim. LeBlanc, <clears throat> I honestly think it was too harsh, but I think it's in the right direction. Um, I don't think LeBlanc should be a uh, damage unit. I think if she does damage, I think it should be from auto attacks. Which, uh, LeBlanc currently actually does a lot of auto attacking damage. Like, maybe they can nerf this and maybe buff attack speed a little bit more if she needs help. Basically, she can be... High AD provides you with <clears throat> provides you with um, CC and then has high attack speed to cast multiple times. Uh, I also I also do like the tank buff. I think LeBlanc should have been this from the very beginning. So I, I'm okay with this. They can't nerf all Shadow Blue Buff users or the items useless. Shadow Blue Buff is never going to be useless. It's always going to be okay. Because the thing about Shadow Blue Buff is that uh, there's always gonna be, uh, there's always almost always gonna be users for Shadow Blue Buff, right? It's not, it's not like having thirty mana at the beginning of the f fight is just bad. <clears throat> they should sure reward Shadow Blue Buff to Mono Mono Mune. I, I I personally think Shadow Blue Buff is really fun. I do agree that it's kind of a problematic item, but I don't think it's, I don't think it's that bad. I like the idea of Shadow Blue Buff at least. I I love the idea of having like, like Lee Sin or Rise infinitely cast. Okay, well, anyways, that's Shadow Blue Buff. Nautilus, uh, this is good. This is good. Uh, Nautilus was really bad. Sejuani's good. Thresh is fine. These are all fine. But I will say that Nautilus buff and the Thresh buff contributes to the problem of Kale. Because uh, all these small buffs to Kale comps uh, actually makes it a lot easier to play Kale. So. <coughs> Katarina, 3 star nerf. Uh, yeah, this, this one's probably needed. Um. Actually, the apparently the assassins uh, as a whole got nerfed by quite a bit. According to this, according to this thing, assassins got nerfed by what? How much? Assassins got nerfed because of the crit damage change. Assassins got nerfed. Let's do a four by like thirteen percent damage. I don't know if this is the right way to compare, but. I don't think it's 13% damage, right? I, I don't like the way he, he compares this, but... Overall, it's probably a fairly sizable nerf. <coughs> to Assassin's as a whole. Um, but yeah, Assassin, uh, like for, for example, Katarina, Decap is probably her best itemization. It's probably no longer Infinity Edge. Uh, for Riven, this change is good. Probably needed. Riven was actually really, really strong as a carry. A lot of times, like in Abomination comps, you can play Riven instead of Draven as a carry. And it'll be totally fine. Um, so I think Riven actually needed this nerf. <clears throat> Nunu, uh, Nunu nerf isn't really relevant. Actually, I thought Nunu was super broken. But like when Abomination is not strong and when Brawlers are not strong, like said it's not strong, Nunu is pretty much not played. Even if Nunu was really strong, like Nunu is virtually unplayable because he has two completely dead traits. And like right now, you generally don't want to play Nunu because it's really hard to pivot out of him too. Like once you commit to Abomination, pivoting out of Abomination is, is a pain in the ass. And once you commit to Brawler Frontline, trying to pivot into like Knight Frontline or like Cavalier Frontline is insanely difficult. Um, so I don't know. I mean, there's uh, Abomination pivot into like uh, Mordekaiser comps, but either way, um, uh, I'm I'm good. This change is good, but Nunu. Probably doesn't need nerfs.
Compare 0.26 to 0.19 is not the same as 1.26 to 1.19. Yes, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. I, that's why I don't like the way how he does things, but I don't know. Okay, uh, Zyra. Honestly, this change seems like a nerf to Zyra to me. Does it does it seem like a nerf to anyone else? I don't get I don't really fully get this uh quote unquote buff. Because it just seems like Zyra um does less damage. I don't know. I don't know. It just seems like Zyra does less damage. She takes six autos to cast. Often Zyra doesn't cast a second time anyways, if you like um uh frontline her, or by the time she gets a second cast, it's almost irrelevant. She takes what 16 autos to cast a second times. And she just does what less damage? How much less damage is this? 250 to 200? That's like that's like a 20% nerf. <laughs> I don't get it. I just don't I just I just don't get it. Um, but it's fine. I don't get it. The Shadow Shoujin, she's so annoying. Okay, that's fair. I don't get it. it seems like a nerf. <clears throat> maybe it is a buff. Uh maybe I But why would you put Shadow and Shoujin on Zara anyways? I don't get it. You should be part of the balance team. Should I? I feel like I'm not. I'm not gonna create a balance, but it's fine. That's a Robin. Let's rank back up. Oh my god. Okay, Aphelios. This is a good buff. Aphelios is kind of a puppy left until now. No complaints here. Jax needs this buff. Uh, finally, th th thank god they reverted this nerf. Like, why I don't even know why they had this nerf in the first place. That that show was a uh, that show was a throw. Karma, dude. Karma got a huge buff this patch actually. The weird thing about Karma is that uh, Karma no longer needs um, mana items, because now her mana goes from uh, her mana goes from fifty down to thirty five, down to twenty, down to ten, right? So let's just say if you don't have any mana items, it's five plus four plus two plus one. But let's just say you had a uh, let's just say let's just say you had um, Invoker, which you always do when you play Karma. That's four plus Three plus two plus one, so ten autos. What is this? Twelve autos. And let's do let's count um, blue buff. Blue buff no mana is three plus two. That's zero. So that's five autos. And then um, blue buff invoker is three plus two plus zero. So it's it's also five, right? Uh, so basically. By putting mana items on her, you're saving five auto attacks? That's so ridiculously little, right? In the span of a fight, that's... Uh, I mean, how? what is even the DPS difference? I don't even know. It's like virtually none. Six seconds? No, but you're, you're saving six seconds of what, though? I can't even tell you. Um, Like, this is going to be trailing behind to get to, to get to one mana state, but... Like, if you do the ratio at the time difference of, like, the number of casts, basically, like, we, we, what we need to do is, like, time on the left side, number of casts on the right side, and then we need to, like, measure, like, if, if time is 10, uh, what's the cast difference, right? And I, I actually can, I can probably say, that, like, like, mana items are virtually worthless now. So Karma is better built all EP, which is actually super weird to me. Um, I don't really like that, but I, I don't like that. I don't like this change, but um, actually this, you know, this particular change was uh, proposed to, was essentially proposed by me to the Riot team. But instead of doing 50, 35, 20, 10, I said, hey, we should do 50, 40, 30, 20. So that blue buff has a reason to exist. Um, Invoker has a reason to exist, and, oh, and Zero, and Shoujin has a reason to exist. At the time, I remember blue buff being the best, but like, um, the difference between blue buff and non-blue buff was like 10 auto attacks, or something like that, I can't remember. But, and the difference between blue buff and Shoujin was like 2 auto attacks, I can't remember. But I remember the, I remember it was like a really big difference between having mana and not having mana. Right now, it just seems like Karma has no reason to have any mana whatsoever. Shoujin or blue were equal until 20 mana? Hey, I'm not fully understanding. So Invoco is really good for Karma? Yes. But you always play Invoco with Karma. Why don't you work on T at TFT? If I worked at TFT, I can't even compete in TFT. 
<clears throat> and anyways, this change right here, Karma, Karma, Karma One literally became Karma Two. Um, like, uh, Karma One is two forty. Um, seems like a big buff to me. I, uh, either way, I, I don't think Karma is super problematic because it's really hard to uh, justify. Um, it's really hard to. Uh, it's really hard to not justify, but it's really hard to transition to Karma. Um, so I don't think it's gonna be too problematic. We'll see. Velkos change, I think this is really good. I don't know why. This this change alone made Velkos feel pretty playable. Kale nerf, this this nerf is irrelevant. Um This this nerf is so irrelevant. Um with giant rage blade, it's like super irrelevant. Um This buff is uh, these buffs every single buff to Archangel Staff uh pushes it towards the threshold of really broken. Uh, the the units that use Archangel Staff aren't really the units that you think about though. Like the units that use Archangel Staff really well are units like... This is really weird. It's like units like fucking Tarek. Because if you look at Tarek, his ability scales insanely well with AP. And then um, he has 200 mana. So that means he's gaining... He's gaining... How much AP is he gaining? He's gaining the base 10. Plus 45 times 200 and plus 5 times 200. He's gaining. <laughs> what? He's gaining 100 mana. He's gaining 90 mana every cast. So he, he gains this. This this item gives him 100 AP. This item gives him 100 AP. Uh, and then and then Terry heals instead of for healing for 750, he heals for 100. Uh, 1500. So he heals back to full health. Okay. He heals back to full health. Which guarantees him to cast again. I know, I know, it only scales healing, but the thing is that it guarantees. Okay, so Terry heals back to full health. Terry at full health almost always casts, right? If you give him like a some bra like an item like Bramble or like an item like uh, Warmogs, so he heals back to full health because he's healing seven hundred fifty times, uh, two hundred AP, right? So he has so he has a hundred extra AP, so he's healing a thousand five hundred. So he heals back to full, and then next time he heals back to full again, plus more. Uh, so, so it actually goes up like a crazy amount. Uh, Tarek is for sure really good with uh, this item. He's he's his scaling. I won't say his scaling is good, but because the nature of his spell is really really strong, he heal overheals even harder. Okay, that's fair. Yeah, that's uh, that's fair. But basically, a hundred HP, hundred percent HP. Tarek almost always casts in my from my experience, right? Um, so then if he goes back to 100 HP, he almost always casts again, in which then he almost always casts again, and so on and so forth. So in the event that your opponent doesn't have enough burst to uh, kill a 100 HP Tarek, which is very, very often, if he has any tank items on it, what happens is that Archangel Staff just makes Tarek virtually unkillable uh, permanently. Uh, so this, I mean, uh, this this was the thing before the Archangel uh, Staff mana change, but like, it's, it's getting even more and more problematic. Um, Arc Arc uh, DM the Staff of Immortality is not as big of a deal. Uh, Bloodthirster, Lifesteal, I, I don't even know this is why this was nerfed. I don't even think this was a problem. <coughs> Rest uh, this makes it, this nerf is good. Um, oh, sorry, this buff is good. Rest Thurster was really built. Hand Justice, uh, this is good. I probably needs to be 50 in my opinion, but this isn't a step in the right direction. Ionox Spark probably needs to be buffed more, but a step in the right direction. Um, sacrificial gauntlet. Uh, this this item, I know, I know, I bitched a lot about this fucking item because I was saying that how it was unplayable on brand, but it was like insanely good on Velcons. But now it just feels like it's good on everyone. I don't know. <laughs> Every time I see sacrificial gauntlet, like it, it, it just doesn't do any self damage. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. It's just like whenever I, I, I look at this. Okay, basically let's take a let's take a unit. Like we can take maybe I don't know. Uh, what's a unit that we could use this? Um, chemo. Uh, it does so sixty times two. So it does one hundred twenty damage. One hundred twenty damage. It just feels like previously it was doing one hundred and forty times fifteen of its max health. Which is 216. Now it's going down to what? Now it's going to down to 
120? Yeah, now it's going down to like 120. It just feels like this item just got buffed. <laughs> on like every single unit. Maybe I'm wrong. Old Shadow JG was killing off. No, uh, Timo could actually use Old Shadow JG. Timo was not bad with Old Shadow JG. Uh, like, Timo's one of those fringe cases where o uh, Old Shadow JG was vi viable. But, like, this item is just uh, buffed in general, I think. Like, there's almost no. Uh, there's no, almost no. Like, tell me a unit that you'd rather have JG than Shadow JG. Like, that's my argument. Like, this item is just straight up better JG now, right? Like, who would. Like, Velkos use Shadow JG for sure. Rise for sure, if, if I was damage rise, Shadow JG. Karma, Shadow JG. Mordekaiser or Shadow JG. Zara, Shadow G I don't even know. Zara doesn't want any items. Like, wh who's the unit that wants Shadow... Uh, who wants JG now? What? Isn't this just better sh uh, JG? I don't get it. Shadow JG is worse on some units in the early game, like Ziggs? Okay, that's fair. Wait, no, it's not. Wait, no, it's not. Ziggs doing... Z Zix doing 40 damage to himself? Wait, oh no, it could be. Wait, no, it's not. It's not. It can't be. AD damage to himself? Maybe. Maybe. Okay, to me, either way, to me, this just seems like better... Okay, let's let's compare old Shadow JG. Let's compare old JG to. Maybe you're right. Old J, old would have done 135. Now it does. Now it does 80. What? <laughs> it's not. It's even better on Ziggs. I either way, either way, I, I think this is just straight up better. I'm I'm like almost 100 sure this is just straight up better JG now. There's not even like a decision. It's like how Shadow Hodge is always better than Hodge. There's never a decision to be made here. It's always a Shadow JG. Yeah, it's more, more or less buffed all across the board, and that's fine. Times Revenge. This this item needs to be reworked, I think. It's either useless or completely broken. It's useless on units. It's useless in any team comp that can't have their tanks survive for more than like 15 seconds, which is the vast majority of team comps. But any any comps that that have their tanks survive for more than um like fifteen seconds, this this item get gets into terrible broken range. Probably just needs to be reworked. Banshee's claw, okay, sure. Oh, Nubal was saying that it's uh is as good as JG. Wait, okay, okay, hold on. Okay, so Zix loses 80 damage per here. Let's just do, work out the math, because I really think Shadow JG is just straight up better. So let's just work out the math since uh since ranked is down anyways, right? And I'm uh, God, I have nothing to do. My life is so sad without uh TFT. Why am I so depressed? Okay, um So Okay, let's just work out the math. Okay, Zix does 350 damage times with Shadow J. Oh, well, in regular JG, he does well, he has 1.1 1 .1, a base uh, AP ratio of the item component, which is 0.1. Then um, then the crit times the crit. Crit chance is um, 0.15, so he has a 0.4 chance to crit. It's a 0.4 chance to crit. To crit for, how much is he critting for? 1.7 damage. Plus uh, a non-crit. Or 1.0 damage. So what is this? So your Zix does an average of this much damage. Now with Shadow JG, what does this number go up to? Sh Shadow JG only modifies the, the crit chance, right? What is the chance? 40% chance? No. 
an additional 20% chance. So 0 0.6 and 0 0.4. <clears throat> oh, wait, the, the damage changes. It's not actually that big. Wait, no, new boss right. You're gaining a total of uh, how much damage you're gaining? Oh no, new boss right. Early game units don't want Shadow JG. You're gaining about 53 damage. You're gaining about 53 damage. You're losing about 80 HP, which is probably not worth, right? Hmm, new boss right. Wait, no, new boss definitely kind of right because. The, the damage you gain, at least with early game, um, early game AP carriers, let's use six, six, two. The damage you gain is actually does not offset the HP you lose. I, I, for some reason, I thought the difference was going to be more than 80, 80 HP, but no. New battles are actually right. Uh, okay, I guess that means early game, um, you're right, Shadow JG is actually slightly worse for most of your AP carriers. Um, now, obviously, sacrificing 80 HP to do 54 HP is probably okay, but um, I would say that's a uh, net downside. Is Newbell broken? Yeah, he's really smart. Newbell is really smart. I don't know how he does how he does it, but he's able to just fucking look at things and just fucking know, you know. Okay. Either way, all right. That's sh sh enough about Shadow JG. I think either way. I think once you get two star units, this, this is a straight up buff. I'm almost 100% sure. Straight up buff across the board. And it's not a single unit that wants Shadow JG, that wants regular JG. Bug fix. Um, okay, sure, whatever. Uh, this is already said, but Hecarim kind of feels dead. He doesn't feel super dead, but um, he, he's no longer a 1v9 unit. Velkaz, this is actually a pretty big change. I've had this happen to me earlier today. Uh, Velkaz hit uh, Ivern, killed it, and then just uh, hit the next unit. That's a really big buff. Um, oh, apparently Pantheon procs Varus now? Wait, maybe I should do that in a normal. Maybe I should play normal, play Pantheon Varus. Apparently Pantheon procs... Every single tick of Pantheon's ultimate procs Varus' uh, ability. So you can just stack... All your AP items on Varus, all your tank and um, eight, all your tank items on Pantheon. Apparently, he'll just like mow people down. I'm actually pretty excited. Should I try this in the normals? This can be critically strike. Can you did that earlier and sucked? Oh, okay, does it? This doesn't matter. Yuna should no longer chase Kenneth, sure. Fix the rare bug work 